The Disaster Risk Management Program in Sri Lanka started uh, in the aftermath of December 2004 tsunami. The government took some significant steps to establish uh, the country's disaster risk management system. The main focus of the DRM programs were to reduce the casualties in time of a disaster, basically to save lives. That includes strengthening of the early warning systems, strengthening of the preparedness and response systems. Sri Lanka is a middle-income country and there is a rapid infrastructure development uh, taking place in the country. During the last uh, five, six years, there has been a number of uh, flood and drought uh, events. And uh, the 2010-11 floods has caused an economic impact close to $1 billion. And the damaged cost to roads alone was more than $400 million. So this led uh, the Ministry of Disaster Management, Ministry of Finance to think more and more on reducing the economic impacts of disasters. This is our first really comprehensive engagement in disaster risk management in South Asia. Uh, we're both addressing short-term issues and long-term issues, both from the fiscal side and the physical side. So we've got these three projects, the first two happening now for $212 million, the contingent line of credit and the physical resilience project, and the third one coming in in about two years time, three years time for physical resilience. In parallel, we're providing a lot of associated uh, technical assistance financed by the Global Facility for Disaster Reduction and Recovery. Both on the, the physical side, we're improving the visualization of risk, uh, doing community-based mapping of urban environments that enables decision makers to understand what is the impact of different flood events and what is the impact of those flood events if they make specific investments in infrastructure to increase resilience, or if they make changes in land use so that can, they can create flood zones where, where populations are are impacted by different types of events. And then we're providing technical assistance around a, a comprehensive disastrous financing and insurance program. So the anchor of this program will be the contingent line of credit of $102 million. But equally importantly, we'll be providing recommendations and assistance and development of instruments to increase the efficiency of the budget ex execution after an event to ensure that resources reach the affected populations more quickly, a management of the contingent liability of the support to affected populations, protection of the government infrastructure and budget through risk transfer mechanisms and the development of risk information to improve the capacity of the private sector to provide different types of insurance from household insurance to, to agriculture insurance. The Climate Resilience Improvement Project has two major components. The first one, it's a major endeavor to uh, model flood and risk in nine major river basins in Sri Lanka. And this needs uh, extensive uh, technical expertise and experience. And to augment that, what we are trying to do is to work with international consultants and bring those international consultants into the Ministry of Irrigation and Water Resources in Sri Lanka and have them work with engineers there. The aim is uh, for these consultants to uh, lead uh, in the design and the modeling of the first few basins and for the government engineers to design and model the rest. The second part has three components. Uh, there is a flood and drought mitigation component to trying to rehabilitate and strengthen recently uh, damaged infrastructure. There is a transportation continuity project that strengthens roadside slopes and there's a component that protects schools from landslides. With the CAT DDO in particular, this is an instrument that gives the country access to liquidity, to, to financial resources in times of crisis. Um, it's, it's essentially a way to improve uh, the extent to which the, the country can respond to its own needs rather than seek you know, funds from outside of the country. Our objective at the World Bank going forward, our strategy going forward, is to develop global practices where we're able to bring a comprehensive solution to governments. That is not a silo-based roads project with a roads team or a, a water project with a water team, but alternatively what we're able to do in the direction that this institution is moving in is really bringing different sectors together that aren't used to working together, having them sit around the table, 
and come to consensus on an analytical basis in terms of the, the drivers of disaster risk and on a go forward infrastructure and community basis both in rural and urban environments and taking into account uh, climate change, how is it that infrastructure planning can be improved in the medium term?